No one admit that you fucked up. <laughs> definitely. Definitely crit variance. That's what it was. The entire P5 is leaked. Uh... Well, yeah, someone said they data mined the mechanics. I mean, you still got to play it, though, right? You still got to play it. Depends if they're going to check the leaks or whatever. Oh, look, it's Alpha. We did find Alpha eventually. Are you trying to bait me into the house? I feel like I'm being baited into the house here. What's happening? Hi. Hello. Oh, do I need to mute? Oh, why? How is it not damaged? The car is broken. So we've got insurance if the car's broken. That doesn't count. How has it got wear and tear that's rendered the car unusable in less than a thousand miles? How is that qualified? I have two separate insurances in this car, and it's been warranted, and none of them can pay. Okay, it's like. How is this possible? Do you know what I mean? How is it possible by two insurances and extended warranty and everything? The car is dead, it's barely been driven, and nobody's responsible. Like, how is this possible? I'm still paying for the car, I'm still paying finance. Torch the place. Well, we have gap insurance, which is insurance if the car is written off early. We have full coverage insurance. And we have all the extended warranty should anything go wrong with the car. And none of them qualify for the dead car. But I've given them all money to prevent this. Do you know what I mean? I've given, I've paid all these people for exactly this reason, and they still are not culpable. Right? Let's let's call in the big guns. Let's do it. That was our last ditch effort to get out of this. Let's call in the big guns. Let's do it. Is this place closed down or what? Every time I ring, the phone just doesn't ring. I get I, I get one of those like press one, press two things. You press one of the buttons. Who are you I'm phoning some old friends from my previous life. You've called out of hours. I, I just haven't though, have I? Right, that's just not true. Come on, ring. Maybe I've got his mobile number. I might have. I haven't changed my phone number in years. Alright, this phone number does not work. Alright. Do I still have his mobile number? Checkers. No, I don't. Budge. Uh, why would the phone number not work? Uh, I bet they've closed down.
Money says these guys have closed down. When was the last update on this fucking place? It says it's open and closes at 6 p.m. Like, they have their times on there. They're in cahoots. I just, um... Shit. Why didn't I save his number? Ah, <gasps> I've got it! No fucking way. I was spelling his name wrong. It's ringing! Go on, answer. Fuck. He's busy. Let me send him a message. Let me text him. I haven't spoken to him since 2013. Hey, dude. Uh, don't know if you remember me. I'm I would love someone trustworthy to have a look at it. All right, we've sent the text message. First message since 2013. Delivered. Okay, one last job. <laughs> Actually calling a hitman. Kind of. Kind of. I bet he put the phone down because he didn't know the number. I imagine he would have deleted my number. I can't believe I still have it, actually. He might have retired, but this guy is the car chad. Go on, I want to see a response coming through. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. <laughs> You're making it way more epic than this is. Way more epic than it is. But he's the car god. I mean, I sent literally... Two or three million pounds worth of work his way. He has to remember who I am. That would be really sad if he doesn't. I mean, there's no way he doesn't, actually. There's no way. I went to his fucking birthday party. I got the personal invite. There's definitely no way. You're the one calling him a god? He is. Like, he was an absolute superstar. This is the guy. Do you remember when I got uh, suspended? Some of you will know this story, but... Uh, do you remember when I got suspended? Um, Because they moved me to an office in a different uh city and i had to get my car repair repaired but it wasn't worth repairing and so the guy that checked it over uh all that stuff happened and when i spoke to the garage they were like we're not charging you for it don't, like, don't worry about it like they uh they did me a lot of favors back in the day in world of warcraft no this is uh this lady tried to get me fired and it backfired very heavily and uh, they, they, they were the garage that were like, it's really not a problem. Like, they were got, he was going to buy me a car. Like, he's, there's no way he doesn't remember me. So, are we complicit? I just don't believe I'm in this situation. It's so fucking unfathomably stupid. Robbing cunts, man. Robbing cunts. I have two separate insurances on this car. And all the extended maintenance and warranty deals. And they're like, yeah, well, it's your problem. It's gonna cost you. Uh, it's gonna cost you at least. Well, at this point, the cost is looking like fourteen thousand pounds for a car that's worth ten. That's where I'm at, <laughs> and I've already spent seven thousand on it since I've had it. <sighs> well, they're not declaring it a write-off, is what they're saying now. The insurance company won't declare it a write-off. Because they're saying it's wear and tear. No, the ombudsman have come back to us. We've had the email back from the ombudsman. And they're like, yeah, we can't. The issue we're having is we can't technically prove that the damage was there 
when we bought the car. So they can argue you must have done something to the car. In my trips between here and the office, which is about two miles, I must have done something. That's what they're, ba- they're basing the whole thing on. It's like, well, can't prove it was us. And that's enough. That's enough. Right, he's not replying. So, who knows? Maybe he doesn't even own that phone anymore. We'll, we'll see what happens today. See if he replies. He may not even open that phone. Well, it's just... It's all these insurance companies, right? They do... Their job is to find ways not to pay. Why am I trapped in a box? We've been to a solicitor. They can't do anything. They're like, legally, they're they're fine. There's no legal recourse for this. Plate seems to be in order. Head right to the signing counter. Be mindful that our establishment is still in destruction. Should I not be in here? Okay. <laughs> Is this our nightclub in construction for the party? If don't go downstairs. What are you guys planning for this party? It's a sex fest, isn't it? Are you guys actually going to build a nightclub in here? Because I don't think you guys have the right mentality to build a nightclub. If I'm being totally honest with you. You're going to make it weird. You're going to make it weird. Yes, we have a date for the party. We do have a date. I'll uh, show it in a second. Don't go. Okay. They've got doormen on the stairs. Can I go in here? Am I allowed in here, Braga, or not? Or should I save it? I don't want to spoil anything you guys are building. I don't know, is Gimpy here? Because I assume it's Gimpy and Landron Zone that are building things. I'm just checking. If the guys are building something, it's best practice to not spoil it shouldn't matter there's nothing there yet okay it's empty anyway all right we'll leave it then i do oh your soul is giving me the stink eye <laughs> i want to point out john is a terrible doorman i'm just going to put that out there john is an awful doorman We did get the new house, yes. And in celebration of our brand new house, it's that time once again, because we haven't Good had morning. one for a while. We are throwing a big-ass fucking party. And if you've never been to an FF14 party, you should come, because it going to be good. It going to be good. Because these things are one of the best in-game events in an MMO you can go to, and you can enjoy them for free. We're back, beaches. We'll be on Chaos Spring on Miss 125, plot 35, 4th of February. 
around 7 p.m. UK time. And if you do not play FF14, that doesn't mean you can't come. You can install this for free. I think you need level 5. I think we did a check, right? You need to be level 5 in order to attend. So nothing much uh, to come to the party. So even if you've not played FF14 before and you want to try out uh, coming to a party, I highly recommend it. There will be live DJs. I think it's level 5 we checked yesterday during the team meeting. I think they altered it. Um, might be 15. It's it's nothing that doesn't take more than us. Uh, so, yes, there will be live DJs, actual live DJs playing on Twitch TV, actual DJs that will be DJing the party um, for about 12 hours. So I will get there when we get started. Yes, I will be drinking. I haven't had a drink with you guys in ages. It will be a ton of fun. We are going to have a couple of competitions to give stuff away for people who are attending the party. <laughs> We do not have a billboard, no. A beach house for a lot of people. Enjoy the, the beautiful beaches. As okayed by Roger Brown. World first raider. <laughs> As okayed by Roger Brown. <laughs> so, the party will be here. Get your outfits ready. Get your glams ready. I think we're giving away a few hundred dollars worth of stuff for the competitions. So it should be well worth it. So we'll leave the guys to their construction efforts uh, until the party. But I highly recommend. I highly recommend. Even if you just want to come and jump off our diving board, you can do that. We've got a nice diving, a nice diving board off the cliff. So if you just even want to come... Hopefully it'll be sunny. A graphics card will be nice. Anything else I can get for you guys? Just uh, just let me know. If there's anything else I can get for you guys, just fill me in. It will be a beach party, though. Uh, there'll be some stuff at the house. Obviously, the crawlers are building some stuff. But uh, we have the... We're back at the beach. My intention and hope is that people don't just drown themselves within the first 10 minutes. That's what I'm hoping. That people don't just drown themselves in the first 10 minutes. So we'd really appreciate if you could... We have had a mass drowning in the past. But uh, lifeguards... I'm sure Ross will be running lifeguard duty. That's a tall order. <laughs> it's a bit of a tall order. A little bit, yeah. I need to update my glam. We also need to decide what we shall Fantasia to. I believe I have Fantasia on standby for parties. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. We have Fantasia on standby. We are not going Lala. We are not going Lala. No, there will be no Lalas. But I, I know we're going to have things like portrait artists and stuff there for your characters, for the people who love their characters. Uh, all sorts of stuff. We are in, in cahoots with Endless Nights and the Sinners of Final Fantasy XIV. <sighs> so we have Endless Nights and the Sinners uh, whose logo is a devil's tail yeah there'll be artists and all sorts so really uh, have we uh, let Zeppler and Co know we're having a party because we haven't seen her in ages and Jesse and whatnot because we can of course crawl across time uh, uh, what time is it perfect uh, anyone for the expert Zeppa is US now, but she still has an EU account, surely. I gave her an EU account. I bought her an EU account. Did she take the EU account I gave her? She has an EU alt? Yeah, I would think so. I literally bought her an EU account. What the hell, dude? She sold it for more bunny ears. Tell you what, that girl is a filthy liar, man. She's a filthy, filthy liar. Everything she says is scams. Yeah, I know she's raiding. I checked in with her yesterday. I know she's doing ultimate. Yeah, she was going over the mechanics yesterday, but I spoke to her. I just dropped into her stream too. 
Yeah, your account doesn't matter as long as you've got a character in the EU. So, yeah. We'd love to see some of our Guild Wars 2 and WoW, WoW people come along. We've never experienced one of these in-game parties. At least the FF ones. Gazak to come. It'd be too degenerate. It won't, it won't be as huge as uh, the rejoining where we couldn't get people to even come into the ward anymore. <laughs> Hopefully it won't be that big that we literally can't load people into the ward anymore. It was fun for the people who were inside. It wasn't fun for the people who started a second party at the teleport stone. Because they couldn't get inside, so they just threw their own party outside so they could get in. The rejoining party was a bit extreme. The rejoining was mega. The rejoining was absolutely huge. The amount of fear we had about transferring realms. That was the first, I think it was the first block party ever, right? I think we still hold that candle. The first ever FF14 block party that ever took place. So many houses. That was a big one. That was a big one. I still think, personally, I preferred the New Year's one. Like, the New Year's one was amazing. Being able to celebrate New Year across so many countries. Like, every hour we had a brand new New Year's celebration. Yes, DJ Manmade has joined the crawlers. DJ Manmade is now a crawler. Joined the crawlers yesterday. Still my favorite DJ. I love the FF14 DJs, but I fucking love my mate. It's so good. Oh, Celine, come back to me. You're going down, monkey boy. You should check it out, man. It's well worth it. If you, Because I imagine most people think they're sex parties. That's what I thought. Uh, the first time I ever went to an FF14 party. Thankfully, they're not. At least ours aren't. There absolutely is ERP parties in FF14. <laughs> that absolutely does exist. It's just not what our parties are. That's only Ross that's, uh... That's only Ross who has that. And how the fuck he still convinces all those people to do stuff for him. Because it's Ross, it's not a good enough answer, honestly. Need more. All the people of my FC wandered into a nightclub for a laugh one night and ended up getting fleeced for the drinks prices. Yeah, you need to be careful if you're a big tipper. You need to be careful if you're a big tipper. Well, as long as we don't have brag out gambling again when we did the casino night. I still hate that Zeppelin won nearly all the money. I lost millions that night. Zeppelin walked away six million up. And she gambled with my money. Is the music too loud? I just turned it back up because it was on mute earlier. Is that about better? About there, maybe perhaps? Zeppelin's taken a lot from me and not giving anything in return. What does that say about her? What does that say about her? She has given a lot. She has taken a lot. She has given nothing. And she's made lies up about me. I'm not even sure why we invited her to anything anymore. In fact, fucking thank God she's gone to the US. 
We're all spared. We're all spared from her trickery and lies. I'm actually happy about it now. Now I think about it. Actually a bit of a result. She said she couldn't see us in the US because she was in prison. And then she said that she did see me and she shouted at me and then ignored her. That's what she said. Word for word. She said she was chasing me down the street saying, Mike, Mike, Mike. And I saw her and just walked away. Yeah, we'll talk about Guild Wars 2 in a little bit. Let's, uh, let's finish this up. We still want to get our gear ready for Rat Savage. Which is what we're working on right now. The, the, my goal right now is Rat Savage gear. So I'm just keeping up so we can be in a good position to do Rat Boy Savage. So we only need to kind of run our expert on the day. And we'll do a hunt train at some point as well. But getting our experts done daily is very efficient. It takes a few minutes. Let me get a big bunch of stones. <coughs> I need to do my WoW M pluses. Let's focus on the raid first of all. If we can beat Razageth Heroic and tick WoW off the uh, list of Project MMO on Monday, I don't think we will. I don't think we'll kill Razageth on Monday. We might do. We'll have to wait and see. We definitely need people with strong gear, though. That fight is just entirely gear dependent, essentially. There's no, uh, there's not much, I don't know what it's like on larger numbers, but probably not much in the way of actually, uh, carrying really undergeared people to it. Savage? Yeah, I'll speak to Jesse today. Let's see if we can get set up for Tuesday for Savage. I think that should be our goal. Not the current raid. That doesn't make any sense. We can, uh, I think we go for getting getting started on the Savage prog as part of Project Enemy. Because obviously 14 is something we've got a little bit more time investment in than we have with Guild Wars and Destiny. me in coach yeah i imagine a lot of people in i'll have to speak to jesse one see if he still wants to do it i think he will uh but also do we want to do like half crawlers half walkers or what See which side is better. It's a team effort. What do you mean? It's a team effort. We work together. It's not a versus. It's never a versus. Team F likes to backstab it. Awful. We're savage you gotta do? We're starting with a realm reborn against the advice of everybody who has done it. We are starting with a realm reborn. Oh god. <laughs> 
Against the advice of everybody, we will start with a Realm Reborn. And we will work through them in that order. I don't know what's in there. I'm going... I mean, I've done... I have done coils, but... Uh, I don't know what the Savage looks like. Well, good luck. <clears throat> Maybe we'll all surprise you and clap its cheeks. Maybe our gaming prowess will be of such caliber. I think a lot of this uh, fear is coming from uh, a place of hearing somebody else say it's hard and not personal experience. Uh, hopefully this will be on Tuesday. We'll see how it goes. I actually don't know what spells my character has. That's that level. He'll be fine. Yeah, probably not a lot. <laughs> I've been waiting so long. Probably not a lot. Is this the OG binding coils and not what the game calls savage coils? It'll be savage coils. We've done their uh, normal coils. Level 50. Jesus Christ. I thought it was 60. That for with C7S? Sure I will. I don't fear difficulty. Dogs are having fun, it don't matter. Yeah, Heaven's Ward will come next. I got the Meteor. Games. Be swallowed by the time. Good morning, Inj. How you doing, buddy? What? That's right. No more games. All the British accents in all the games. How do you like Never this? a Manchester. Never a Manchester. Right, that's intentional now. It totally is. You're doing that on purpose. That's kind of toxic. I'm not going to lie. Good, good. The fitting
rescue him in. No, no, no. I'm not toxic. That's the difference. Why are you still alive? The difference is, I'm not toxic. I support my fellow players in doing what they need. I'm not toxic. GG, all. GG. Unfair accusation? It seems to be very directly pointed at me. That's all I'm saying. You could have stood, like, to its east. And it would have just gone safely away. It did seem to be directly at me. Directly at me. Like, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. It's what I noticed. Perhaps I'm being accusatory. Come on, my dude. Text me back. Be a friend. I bet he's retired. He would have been, like... Oh, he might even be 60 now. Oh, no! We missed Slice! Look at these paws! Well, all our hopes and dreams are dreams on Nephilim Small Galvis. No longer small either. We expect a fixing of former small war criminal. <laughs> uh, even if he's retired about yeah, it depends if he's still got his phone. I don't know, it's been it's been nine years. And his garage isn't even answering the phone anymore. You can't call his garage, so he might not even have the garage anymore. I'm real. This is like a real hit and hope with this one. Well. Well, Nephilim. Our hopes and dreams lay with you. If you were a Lala, you would have survived, wouldn't you? If you'd stuck as a Lala... You gotta get beat by a sprout, actually. Is it a plateless sprout? Yep. Yep. GG. To be fair, I haven't won slices in the last four, five slices. Oh, wow! It's a total wipeout! I don't think I've seen a total wipeout in months! Holy shit! Wow! I have not seen a total wipeout. I splashed you if You are a splasher. The show or what? No, no, no. Yo, Jimbo, we're earning his fucking money there. For truth. Kind of sad. A total wipeout. Is what it is. Steve was surprised to learn you had the slice title. Secretly slightly impressed, I think. <laughs> well, we worked hard for our slice title. <laughs> we worked hard to get our slice title. Wasn't Spee somebody who'd never been to the gold saucer before, though? Who was the streamer who had never been to the saucer? This is not 789. This is 123. Okay, neither. I can live with neither. Nice. Nice. You know I've won every day in the row, uh, in a row for the past week. But never the double. Never the double and certainly not the triple. Unfarch. Unfarch. Streamer client. No, no, some of you guys have had the triple. I have never had the triple. I do realize we didn't on Monday collect our super jackpot, did we? We didn't. We missed it. Today's fashion report. I might just get it out of the way in case I forget. They're back on P5. Let's have a quick look. Uh, 
I thought Arthas wasn't raiding anymore because his summoner had an emergency. Or noon. Noon. Oh, they wiped. Noon, so 10 hours. Well, under 10. Nine yeah, not hours. that. Okay. I'll leave it open on the side. If we get a, a good pull, we can have a look see. Did they get a replacement, Arthas' group? They got a sub in? Yeah, that's for the best. Oh! Oh, it didn't run out! Okay, we got second place last week. Yeah, no such luck this week. No such luck this week. That's okay. That's okay. We got a second place last week. That's fine. Four million is a lot. Four million is asking a hell of a lot. It really is. Is the cap ten million? The trick is the same numbers every week. Oh, yeah. Is that why you've won all the real life lotteries? Because that's how it works. If you do the same numbers every week, you're guaranteed to win. Is that what happened? If that's true, show us your bank account. <laughs> if that's true, show us your bank account. Yeah, <laughs> I feel this is the case. Those students did actually crack the lottery, didn't they? It has actually happened where some students uh, figured out a definite win pattern and got all that money. I've got to work up to this 4 million and I might not even spend it. Once I have 4 million, the mount is cool though. They got charged for what? Figuring the math out? Did they get charged? Is it technically cheating if you figure out a winning formula? Seventy. Let me check. Students. Was it in Texas or Arizona or something? Students figure out lottery uh, algorithm. How a group of MIT students gamed the Massachusetts State Lottery. Here we go. Uh, and won millions of dollars. Even the university is famous and offbeat as MIT, Random Hall has a reputation for being a little quirky. According to campus legend, the students who first lived there in 1968 wanted to call the dorm Random House until the publishing house with the same name sent them a letter to object. The individual flaws have names too. What is called Destiny, a result of its cash-strapped inhabitants selling the naming rights on eBay. The winning bid was $36 from a man who wanted to name it after his daughter. In 2005, another plan started to take shape in the corridors of Random Hall. James Harvey was near the completion of his math degree and needed a project for his final semester. While searching for a topic, he became interested in lotteries. He began analyzing well-known lottery games such as Powerball and Mega Millions, but soon became intrigued by a cash windfall, a game that was introduced in 2004 and was unique to the state of Massachusetts. The rules were simple. Players would choose six numbers for each $2 ticket. If they matched all six in the draw, they won a jackpot of at least half a million dollars. If they matched some but not all of the numbers, they won a smaller sum. The lottery designed the game so that a dollar twenty of every two dollars would be paid out in prizes, with the rest being spent on local good causes. In many ways, Windfall was like all the other lottery games. However, it had one important difference. Usually, when nobody wins the jackpot in a lottery, the prize rolls over to the next draw. If there's no winning ticket next time, it rolls over again and continues to do so until somebody eventually matches all the numbers. The problem with rollovers is that winners, who are good publicity for a lottery, can be rare. And if no smiling faces and giant checks appear uh, in the newspapers for a while, people might not play. Massachusetts Lottery faced precisely that challenge in 2003, when its Mass Millions game went without a winner for an entire year. They decided that Windfall would avoid this awkward situation by limiting the jackpot. If the prize money rose to $2 million without a winner, the jackpot would roll down. 
and instead be split among the players who had matched three, four, or five numbers. E before each draw, that's such a bad idea. Before each draw, the lottery published its estimate for the jackpot, which was based on the ticket sales from previous draws. When the estimated jackpot reached $2 million, players knew that the money would roll down if nobody matched six. People soon spotted that the odds of winning money were far better in a roll-down week than at other times, which meant ticket sales always surged before those draws. As he studied the game, Harvey realized that it was easier to make money on windfall than on other lotteries. In fact, the expected payoff was sometimes positive. When a roll-down happened, there was at least a $2.30 waiting in prize money for every $2 ticket sold. <laughs> in February 2005... Harvey formed a betting group with some of his fellow students. About 50 people chipped in for the first batch of tickets, raising $1,000 in total, and tripled their money within their, uh, when their first numbers came up. Over the next five years, playing the lottery became a full-time job for Harvey. By 2010, he and a fellow team member incorporated the business. They named it Random Strategies Investments, LLC, after their old MIT accommodations. <laughs> Other syndicates got in the action too. One team consisted of biomedical researchers from Boston University. Fucking nerds, man. They got sweaty on it. Another group was led by Gerald Selby, a retired shop owner and former What's math student team? who Hope had previously had success with a smile. similar game elsewhere. In 2003, Selby had noticed a loophole in a Michigan lottery game that also included roll-downs. Gathering a 32-person strong betting group, Selby spent two years bulk buying tickets and winning jackpots before that lottery was discontinued in 2005. When Selby Syndicate heard about Windfall, they came back. There was a good reason for the influx of such betting teams. Cash Windfall had become the most profitable lottery in the United States. During the summer of 2010, the Windfall jackpot again reached the roll-down limit after a prize of $1.6 million went unclaimed in August 12th. The lottery estimated that the jackpot for the next draw would be about $2 million, with a roll-down surely on two or three draws away. Betting syndicate started to prepare. By the end of the month, they planned to have thousands more dollars in winnings. But the roll-down the roll didn't arrive two draws or even three draws later. It came the following week. On August 16th, for some reason... There had been a huge increase in ticket sales, enough to drive the total prize money past $2 million. This flood of sales triggered a premature roll-down. The lottery officials were as surprised as anyone. What? <laughs> they had never sold that many tickets when the estimated jackpot was so low. When Windfall was introduced, lottery officials had looked into the possibility of someone deliberately nudging the draw into a roll-down by buying up a large number of tickets. Aware that ticket sales depended on the estimated jackpot and potential roll-downs, the lottery didn't want to get caught underestimating the prize money. They calculated that a player who used Store's automated lottery machines, which churned out tickets with arbitrary numbers, would be able to place 100 bets a minute. If the jackpot stood at less than 1.7 million, the player would need to buy over 500,000 tickets to push it over the 2 million limit because this would take well over 80 hours. The lottery didn't think anyone would be able to tip the total over 2 million unless the jackpot was already above 1.7. The nerds thought otherwise. When James Harvey first started looking at the lottery in 2005, he'd made a trip into the town of Braintree, where the lottery offices were based. He wanted to get a hold of the copy of the rules. Now, every lottery should be afraid when someone comes in for a copy of the rules. I just want to check something. That's all. I just need a copy of the rules. I am innocent as fuck. So innocent. Oh, yeah. Really the most innocent. It would outline precisely how the prize money was distributed. At the time, nobody could help him. We don't have the rules. It's a lottery. But in 2008, the lottery finally sent him the rules. The information was a boost for the MIT group, which until then had been relying on their own math. Looking on past draws, the group found that if the jackpot failed to top 1.6 million, the estimate for the next prize was almost always below 2 million. Pushing the draw over the limit on August 16th had been the result of extensive planning. 
as well as waiting for an appropriate jackpot size. One close, but under 1.6. The MIT group had to fill out around 700,000 betting slips, all by hand. It took us about a year to ramp up to it, Harvey said. The effort paid off. It's been estimated that they made $700,000 that week. (laughs) Unfortunately, the profits did not continue for much longer. Within a year, the Boston Globe had published a story about the loophole in Windfall and the betting syndicates that had profited from them. In the summer of 2011, Gregory Sullivan, Massachusetts Inspector General, compiled a detailed report on the matter. Sullivan pointed out that the actions of the MIT group and others were legal. Fuck yeah. (laughs) And he concluded that no one's odds of having a winning ticket were affected by betting a lot. Still, it was clear that some people were making a lot of cash from Windfall and the game was phased out. Even if Windfall... Oh, get fucked. Even if Windfall hadn't been cancelled, the Boston University Syndicate told the Inspector General that the game wouldn't have remained profitable for betting teams. More people were buying tickets in roll-down weeks, so the prizes were split into smaller and smaller chunks. As the risk of losing money increased, the potential rewards were shrinking. In such a competitive environment, it was crucial to obtain an edge over the other teams. The MIT group did this by understanding the game better than anyone else. They knew they had probabilities and payoffs and exactly how much advantage they held. So there you go. They didn't get charged for it. The hell is that? A Steam message? I do not want to play Project Playtime. I don't know what that is. It looks like a Five Nights at Freddy's game. Uh, pass for now. <laughs> pass for now. Yeah, Steve was getting more aggro. Uh, well, there you go. See? Yeah, they didn't get charged for it. He sent you this too? He's just spamming every... Might have been hacked. Maybe. Hey, fair play to those dudes. They did the math. They did the math. They worked it out. They got what they needed. For now. Oh, crap. I didn't miss Slice again, did I? God, my nose is so stuffed. Seemingly not. It's 1040. What was it? Leap. Okay. Last leap. Never sorted. Ah. I can leap before I need to blow my nose. That's the fact. I could do it. The risk they took was calculated. Yeah. Nothing worse than people who know math. They spoil everything, math nerds. Figuring shit out. All MMOs were better until people started doing the math. Damage meters, add-ons, all of it. Sims. Whoa, that was an ambitious jump. It's true. Look at Las Vegas. If you've been to Vegas, if you uh, even can work out what your bill is at the bar before they tell you, you get kicked out. No math, not welcome. I remember I was a jump on these pine cones. Here we are. Hopping. Bye, Sprout. I'll be with you soon, pal. Don't worry. The only guy I got a girl was 2 for drama. No, you're not. It's, t- it's 10.30 in the morning, man. We've got so much time. So, uh, I did put Heart of Thorns in the title because uh, we had a long talk with the team yesterday. The Living World story is okay. Uh, it's not great. It's all right. Um, I, what I want to do is I want to finish out this episode to see what the conclusions are like in these Living World episodes. Uh, I'll be honest, it was, it's way longer than I expected. And I'm kind of my focus isn't really on the story too much. It's, uh, I want to know how mechanically it changed. So what we might, what we're probably going to do is, uh, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do, is finish this episode of Living World and see what the conclusions are like. 
and then make a call from there as to whether we go to Heart of Thorns or finish it out. So if it has like a really good payoff, then I have no issue. Uh, do I have to jump back down? Surely not. So that's where I'm at. Right, the story's okay. Uh, where's the gold? Over there. So that's what I see. I, what I did enjoy about Living World so far was the bosses. Like having those uh, little boss encounters, or like the end of story boss encounters, that's been really fun. Although very buggy. I think it's fair to say. They, they have their issues. Let's put it that way. But uh, overall, it's been really fun. Wait, I've missed one? What? Where? What? What the hell? Are you trolling? Blind? What do you mean? Oh, it's there! I see it, I see it, I see it. How in the hell did I miss that? Like, legitimately, how did I miss this? Did it just not trigger when I ran in it, or did I run past it? Knows? Did nobody catch what, why I missed that? I don't know. Well, no problem. B anyway. Gaming. <sighs> That's a bad miss. It's the skirt. He jumped over it, I think. I don't know, man. I have no idea. But more points for me. That'll do. Bring it home, baby. Oh, what's this? Chaos? Okay. <laughs> Chaos. Oh, what's our drama stories tonight? Oh, you put the Final Fantasy X story back in. We should check out the Final Fantasy X story. I have no idea how we got a drama time out of Final Fantasy X. A guy who thought all the dragons in the game were bots. An EverQuest story? EverQuest is absolutely not on my list of games to check. It's not there. Yeah, I don't know. We've got FF, an FF10 drama story. I'm not even sure how that can happen. Oh, there's a cult meetup. Uh, everybody okay? You praying to the Namazu? Have you ever read up about the Final Fantasy house? What do you mean? I don't know what you mean by the FF house. Like this one? I have a little jelly of the people raiding Ulduar right now. <laughs> no, Cass Kaiser, no. Final Fantasy House. It's a cult story. Final Fantasy House. Down the rabbit hole. Is that it? This is a 40 minute long video. Creepy Final Fantasy house story detailed in Down the Rabbit Hole. YouTuber Fred Nudson creates a detailed video about the disturbing saga of the Final Fantasy house as part of his well-received Down the Rabbit Hole series.
There is really no questioning FF7's legacy. The game is a landmark historical release that played a big role in the console war between PS1 and N64 and remains one of the most highly praised Japanese RPGs of all time. FF7 has millions of fans around the world and is even popular enough to warrant a full-fledged remake, but some fans take their love of their game a little too far, as was the case with the people from the famous Final Fantasy House story that was popular on the internet in the mid-2000s. Now, thanks to a video by a YouTuber as part of his Down Rabbit Hole series, the old stories were turning to the spotlight. For those unfamiliar, the FF House is the name given to an apartment rented by two individuals referred to as Genova and Hojo in Pennsylvania. So they weren't their real names. Did they change their names to that? Or are these just... Uh, are, they, are these just... Uh, we'll see. Genova or Jen for short, believed and convinced others that they were actually video game characters reincarn reincarnated into the real world. Jen and Hojo would then lure people to their apartment, assign them a video game character that they were supposedly lived as in a past life, and then proceed to abuse them in a number of ways. Jen and Hojo would emotionally, mentally, and even sometimes physically abuse the other people living with them. They would also take advantage of their roommates financially, like forcing them to buy random things, as well as shoulder the entire financial burden when it came to paying rent or buying food. The saga of the FF house is presented with great detail by Nutson in this video. Watch it here. Nutson's video goes on a detailed, similar incident took place. What's the actual story? I don't want to watch a 40-minute video. They, they made out that they were Genova and Hojo reborn. Why would you choose those two characters? Of all the characters to choose, it's a creepy cult. It's a long story. I don't think I can even find it. She turned them into a mini cult. Uh, is this it? It's, uh, when fandom goes wrong. It wasn't the hunger that finally drove Sid to leave the FF7 house. It wasn't the way the others took advantage of him, a 19-year-old trans kid with a love of art and drinking problem. It wasn't even the movie. Is this really dark? Like, how dark does this go? It's pretty dark. He left his shoes outside to dry and went inside to the glitter-covered surfaces, the rank odor of neglected trash, the shouting and emotional abuse. The next morning, his shoes were gone. Well, that doesn't sound like a fun read. I'll have a look at it later. <laughs> I'll have a look at it later.